Graphite has been around for quite a while now. From its ancient origins to its more popular use in early pencils and crucibles, this element has brought in a lot of wonders in our society. But have you ever wondered how one element can produce millions of artworks? The secret does not only lie on its components, but also on how it is acquired and processed. Hello and welcome back to Lord Gizmo. Today, we will talk about those processes and get to know how facilities process graphite. It all starts with acquiring the graphite through mining. There are two ways to do this, which are open pit mining, where they utilize near surface deposits and underground mining, where they employ deeper deposits. In this facility, they acquire the needed graphite through open pit mining. This means that the whole process involves a lot of blasting, excavation and crushing of rocks. The process is quite straightforward. First, they drill holes with uniform depths into the selected area. This machine helps them create cylindrical holes that will later on serve as the cavities where the controlled explosives will be placed. After drilling, they proceed to the strategic placement of explosives. They do this by attaching them on ropes and slowly placing them inside the holes. Once everything is set, they vacate the area and start detonating the explosives. Then, the debris and crushed rocks will be gathered by these excavators. To have a more systematic and organized way of doing things, the rocks will be pre-sorted according to their size. Different excavators and trucks will be assigned to different sizes of the debris and rocks. Then, they will be prepared for transportation. Once they reach the processing facility, the rocks will be fed into a series of machines to grind them into smaller pieces. In the case of large chunks of graphite ore, the rocks are first crushed into smaller pieces through the help of jaw crushers or impact crushers. After that, they will be fed into these grinding mills so they can be crushed into an even smaller size. Since they are working with tough processes, this facility made sure that this whole part is reserved for the grinding alone. If you are wondering how the solid and dry graphite ores turned into this liquid and almost slurry type mixture, this is all thanks to the purification process they do after grinding. This helps them remove impurities like quartz and mica from the crushed graphite ores. Now, they still have to separate the valuable graphite from the waste rock to process it completely. This is done in two different ways. First, they let it go through wet screening where they sieve through the slurry to separate the materials based on size and shape. This removes the large unwanted material and creates a size classified feed for the spiral separator. However, this is majorly done by spiral separation. This involves a spiraling trough filled with the slurry from the wet screening process. Thanks to the centrifugal force that it gives and the gravity of the earth, the particles are easily separated based on its density. Heavier particles with higher specific gravity sink deeper into the trough, while lighter particles travel closer to the surface. Let us now move to this part of the facility where the thickening and drying happens. 
The main purpose of the thickening process is to remove the excess water from the graphite slurry after various processing steps like grinding, flotation or classification. There are many ways to do this, but this facility does it through the use of centrifuges. The slurry thickens as it gets rotated at high speeds. This pushes the heavier graphite particles to settle at the bottom and leave clarified water on top. To reduce the moisture content of the thickened graphite, they need to dry it. Just like in the thickening... After that, they will be processed even further so that it can result in this huge cylindrical form. Some applications require specific shapes like flakes, spheres or platelets. The shape of the graphite is totally dependent on what application they will be used for. If the facility is making them for electrodes or battery components, the dried graphite may be further shaped using techniques like compression molding, extrusion or calendaring to achieve specific shapes and sizes. There are also other facilities that include treatment and surface modification in their process. During this step, the graphite will be treated with chemicals or coating to enhance specific properties like conductivity, lubricity or dispersibility. On top of that, they can also opt to employ additional purification steps like thermal treatment or chemical leaching to achieve even higher purity levels for specialized applications. These rolls of graphite will be stored inside these chambers in preparation for bagging. Of course, packaging graphite does not mean they bag these rolls in paper. Graphite is usually bought in powder form, so they need to crush it using this machine at first. After that, they will be placed inside these sacks until they are filled. Then, these sacks will be stacked on top of each other to prepare them for transportation and market distribution. Graphite can exist in many forms. If it is in the form of powder, they are usually packaged in multi-ply paper bags with inner liners for moisture protection and dust control. If the facility is making graphite granules, they will often pack them in similar bags as powders with the option of using valve bags for easier filling and discharge. Flaky graphite is packed in plastic drums, paper bags with inner liners or specialized containers depending on flake size and application. On the other hand, graphite electrodes or other shaped components may be individually wrapped in protective materials before being placed in crates or containers. This journey through the intricate world of graphite processing has revealed the remarkable transformation that occurs from its humble origins in the Earth's crust to its diverse applications shaping our world. We've witnessed the meticulous steps, the innovative technologies and the dedication of people behind each stage. Who would have thought that the pencils we use are made up of an element that needs to go through many processes before it reaches completion? So the next time you use your pencil to draw something, remember what it had to go through before it reached you.